I can't even tell you how many times I've been in public space, particularly early in my transition, when I would walk into a subway car and people would just burst into laughter. And I think people are to have been trained to have that reaction. According to a study from GLAD, 80% of Americans don't actually personally know someone who is transgender. So most of the information that Americans get about who transgender people are, what our lives are and are about, comes from the media. We've been around since there was uh, footage. You just have to look for us. Can we all just talk about D.W. Griffith for a minute? Not only is he incredibly racist, but he turned gender non-conforming people into the joke. So it's like you can't have like queer trans people and blackness in the same space at the same time. So what's to say about my queer trans black ass? They've died so many times, they can't even count on camera. I've been a prostitute, prostitute one, prostitute two, call girl hooker, you know? The crying game created a ripple effect. You are a trans person who existed, made people physically ill was the way in which my favorite movie as a child ended. And there are lots of ugly things about our history, but I think we have to know them. I have been beaten. I have been thrown in jail for gay liberation. And you all treat me this way? There is a one-word solution to almost all the problems in trans media. We just need more. And that way, the occasional clumsy representation wouldn't matter as much because it wouldn't be all that there is. You see a fierceness that's coming up now. That's because we ain't got nothing to lose. These are my sisters up here, but the struggle is real. The ways in which trans people have been represented have suggested that we're mentally ill, that we don't exist. And yet here we are, and we've always been here.